Now, when it comes to buying a new smartphone, a lot of people turn to the internet to look at reviews and benchmark scores and even speed tests to find out what is the best phone they can get inside of their budget. Now, personally, I have some problems with speed tests. I think they are fundamentally flawed. And I have a whole video about all the problems that you will find with speed tests, and I'll link to that here in the description below. At the same time, a lot of people find benchmarks to be too synthetic. At the end of it, you just get a number that tells you something, you know, 32,128, well, well, what does that mean? So a lot of people ask me in the comments, well, Gary, how can we test the real life performance of a smartphone? So I did some thinking and I've come up with a new system and I'm calling it Speed Test G. So if you wanna find out more, please, let me explain. Okay, so the good aspect of a speed test is the fact that it allows you to put two devices side by side and they kind of had a race and you can see which one does better in this kind of real life uh, situation because you're running real uh, applications that have been installed on the phone. Also at the end of it, you get a clear winner and you also get a time number. My phone could do the speed test in three minutes and four seconds or whatever. However, the problem with a speed test is that actually all you're testing is the loading and the initial phase of an application, and you're not actually testing how well it runs. So I'll give you an example on my particular desktop PC. If I click on a big program, let's say like Premiere Pro from Adobe, it might take a certain amount of time to start and actually bring up all those windows and all the stuff it needs to do. But actually, that's got very little to do with the rendering time, which is based, let's say, on the GPU power in many cases. So startup time and running time application usage are two completely different things. And speed tests fail miserably because they don't take into account actually how well apps run. They only take into account how well it can get it loaded into memory and do some initialization. And likewise with benchmarks, a lot of people feel as if they're just too synthetic. They're not actually running real life apps, not actually doing real life things. They're just kind of doing some computing tests in the background and they kind of give you this number that tells you the performance of your phone. So I've come up with a new system which is called Speed Test G, which combines both benchmarks and speed tests to give us the best of both worlds. And the idea is all the failings that I see in speed tests have been fixed with uh, speed test G, but all of the things that people don't like about benchmarks have also been addressed in uh, speed test G. So the basic idea is this, I have written 10 apps, so we're dealing with actual apps here that I have written that test the CPU and the GPU. They do things related to JavaScript and things related to gaming. I'll go through all the tests in a minute. And they're real apps, you can actually launch each app individually. And at the same time, I've written a launcher, a replacement launcher that actually launches all these tests one after the other. So I don't have to be pressing like this on the phone, you know, to kind of get them to launch. This is an alternative launcher that actually launches these apps one after the other. And so what actually happens is, is we can place two phones side by side. We can start off the speed test G and then automatically it will load up an app. The app will do something, do some actual real work, then it'll exit and then it'll load up another real app. And so we're actually getting the idea of loading and running apps as well as actually doing useful tasks. And at the end of it, there's a time code that comes out because we know how long the test has taken. We can put two phones side by side, run it, and let's see which phone does it faster. So let me quickly take you through the 10 tests. There are 10 of them, as I said, and they are run in order. And the first test is a sorting test. So basically, it creates a list of 32,000 random numbers and says to the processor, sort those into ascending order, and it does that 500 times. So that will exercise the CPU, it will exercise the caches in the CPU, and it will exercise, to a certain extent, the uh, main memory. And of course, the app actually has to be loaded, so we still are testing loading time and actually running. Then after it's done that, it will move on to a second test, which takes a picture and then applies different levels of blurring to it. And that blurring is done with the GPU. So again, we load the app, it actually, actually load up and it starts running. And what it does, it tests the GPU using uh, for blurring this picture through different blur levels and see how long it takes. Then the third test is actually a JavaScript version of 2048, you know, that game where you shift numbers to the left and the right and they grow up and up. And I've modified it so it runs automatically. So again, the test has to load up the app, it has to load up the JavaScript engine, it runs JavaScript, and it automatically kind of uh, whizzes the numbers around and then exits once it's finished. 
The fourth test is actually a set of uh, sort of projectiles that go onto the screen. It's called Bloom, it's a Bloom test. And what it does is each of these projectiles is tracked and they move across the screen, but they are given a glow, a bloom around them, and that's done by the GPU. And the number keeps growing, so there's more and more and more of them. So the CPU and the GPU and the main memory and all the caches are being exercised as it tries to track all these different uh, sort of uh, blobs that are moving on the screen. Then after that, we have an SQLite test. Many, many applications use SQLite for storing preferences, for storing data that they've downloaded off the internet so they don't have to keep fetching it down again. And this test basically creates 500 records in an SQL database and then deletes those 500 records and then moves on. Then we have the cubes test, which is basically a simple CPU uh, and GPU test where we've got three rotating cubes. And again, the idea is it has to be loaded into memory. It then has to run. It has to perform a certain number of frames and then it exits and each uh, GPU and CPU combination will do that at different speeds. Then I have a 2D shoot 'em up game. So again, this has to be loaded up. It's like a click on a, the launcher button, it gets loaded up into memory. And then we've got these two kind of enemies that are shooting each other, but I've gone berserk. I've actually just put so many projectiles on that the frame rate really, really slows down as it's trying to track all these different bullets and projectiles that are going on. And then once it's done a certain number of frames, it will then exit and it slows down. It doesn't, not, doesn't keep skip frames. It has to render each individual frame. So the slower the CPU, the slower the GPU, the slower the test will run, which means that it will lose the overall uh, kind of time trial. And then there are three more tests. The first one is actually to test multi-threading. So I start 16 threads. I chose 16 because we have many octa-core machines today. So I thought let's really press this down. So the 16 threads, and again, it's very similar to the sorting test. They have to sort now 65,000 numbers, 64K worth of numbers into ascending order. And it does a hundred times over 16 threads. So each core in the CPU is really being pressed to do as much work as it possibly can. And it, obviously it takes uh, slower on some uh, phones and it's faster on others. The second glass test is a test written in Unity 3D. Unity is a very, very popular 3D gaming engine. A lot of games are written in it. So I thought, well, let's write a 3D game in Unity. And then it basically does a fly around of a nice 3D landscape. And the test is written in such a way that it drops no frames. So it has to render every single frame. It doesn't try to go for maximum frame rate by dropping. It has to render each frame. And that gives us a time how long it takes. And the slower the CPU, the slower the GPU, the longer that whole rendering sequence will take. And the final test is about compression. We use zip files all the time. We use compression in our smartphones all the time. And basically this test will try to add some images to a zip file. It will also unzip a file that's already been pre-prepared and it will do this 10 times over to exercise the caches, to exercise the disk IO, to exercise the CPU, to exercise the memory and to see how quickly it can do it. And again, on a slower CPU, it will take uh, longer. And that's it. And once it's finished, there's a timestamp at the bottom that tells you how long it took to run all of those tests. So we can put two phones side by side and then see which one can complete the test quickest. Now, a couple of things to note. First of all, this system can't be cheated because nobody else has access to my tests. I'm not gonna publish them publicly. I'm not gonna allow uh, OEM smart mode manufacturers to get hold of them so they can try and cheat the system. They don't know what their application names are. They are basically my tests, they remain private and the system cannot be cheated. And again, to emphasize, this takes the best part of speed tests because each of these tests is actually an app. So it has to be started, it has to be loaded into memory, the graphic files have to be read in from the, from the disk, and then it has to actually run the test to see how well it performs. So we get both the benchmarking element and the speed test element. So starting tomorrow, I'm going to post my first speed test video for you guys to see what you think about it. And we're also planning on posting some of these videos also on the Android Authority channel, because if it is a hot new phone that's just come out, then I'm sure that the viewers over on Android Authority will also want to see it. However, we're gonna say the majority of them will be here on the Gary Explains channel, and then also some of the key ones will be over on the Android Authority channel. So watch out tomorrow for the first speed test, and we'll see who's gonna be the fastest phone in this first test. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really excited about this new idea of a speed test, speed test G, that tests all the best things out of traditional speed tests, all the best things out of benchmarks, and gives us some real life performance measures 
for our common smartphones. Please do tell me in the comments below what you think about this idea. Tell me what phones you'd like to see compared. I can't promise I'll do all of them, but it'll be interesting to see which ones you think are important to compare. And well, um, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.